Yes, ma'am. Good morning. This meeting is called to order. Mr. Troman, has anyone signed up for public comment? All right, thank you. And good morning, Ms. Miller. I understand we have no cases to reconsider under agenda item three. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Great. Um, and there are no cases to be considered under agenda items four or five, so we'll proceed to agenda item six. This brings us to consideration of wage claim cases. And um, in that respect, I move that we accept staff recommendations on the wage claim cases on dockets 20, 21, 22, and 23. Commissioner Alvarez? I second the motion that we accept staff recommendations on the wage claim cases on dockets 20, 21, 22, and 23. The motion passes. Item 7, consideration of the unemployment insurance cases. I move to accept staff recommendations on the UI cases on dockets 20, 21, 22, and 23. Commissioner Alvarez? Madam Chair, I second the motion to accept the staff recommendations on UI cases on dockets 20, 21, 22, and 23. The motion passes. This brings us to the end of agenda item 7. We will pause for a moment to allow staff to enter. It will be a very brief moment. It looks like you're all here. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Everyone, I'm up, up to you. Sure. I don't, me too. I don't know why I still have it. I'm going to take it now. Thank you. Okay, good morning. We are back in session. Item eight. Discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding the U.S. Department of Labor waiver of WIOA Section 129A4A and 20 CFR 681.410, allowing the Texas Workforce Commission to reduce the out-of-school expenditure rate for WIOA program year 2019. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Ethan Hur, Workforce Division. Uh, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act brought with it several changes to the formula-funded youth program, most significantly increasing the minimum expenditure rate for the out-of-school youth population to 75% of all youth formula funds allocated to workforce boards. The 75% expenditure requirement has made it difficult for boards to serve both out-of-school and in-school youth in ways that best meet each local area's needs, which vary according to population, resources, economy, employment outlook, and other labor, mar labor market factors. As a component of the two-year we owe a plan modification, TWC requested that the Secretary of Labor lower the out-of-school youth expenditure requirement through a formal waiver request. The Secretary approved TWC's waiver request to reduce the minimum expenditure rate to not less than 50%. The waiver authorizes TWC to reduce the 75% minimum out-of-school youth expenditure rate through June 30th, 2020, which is the end of the program year 2019. This morning, staff seeks direction on reducing the minimum out-of-school youth expenditure rate applicable to boards from 75% to 60%, which would bring the out-of-school youth expenditure threshold back to pre-WIOA levels. This concludes my remarks, and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Commissioner Alvarez? No questions. Is there a motion? Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve reducing the minimum out-of-school youth expenditure rate applicable to boards from 75% to 60%. And I second the motion. We are unanimous. Thank you. Item 9, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding new certification and recertification of community rehabilitation programs to participate in the Purchasing from People with Disabilities State Use Program. Kelvin Moore or Howard Joseph? Grand mm -hmm. entrance. Kelvin, we're on item 9. <laughs> Yes, Calvin, we're on item nine. <laughs> we are on camera. Yes. That was perfect timing, actually. <laughs> um. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, good morning. My name is Kelvin Moore, Program Manager, Parks and People with Disabilities. We have before you uh, agenda item nine, new certification of one community rehabilitation program, Lace King Global Service Incorporated and the recertification of one community rehabilitation program. It's a new rehabilitation program, Goodwill Industries of Northeast Texas, from Sherman, Texas. Staff has reviewed all materials presented by the CRP. In addition, we work with the central nonprofit agency to go over the, the documentation. 
Do you have any questions regarding that? Mr. Alvarez? No questions. Nor do I. Is there a motion? Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve the new certification and recertification of the community rehabilitation programs. I second the motion. We're unanimous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 10, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding approval of products offered by certified community rehabilitation programs under the Purchasing from People with Disabilities State Use Program. Yes, for the record, my name is Kelvin Moore, Program Manager, Purchasing from People with Disabilities. Texas Workforce Commission. We have before you agenda item 10, the listing of six new products and one product price revisions that are being offered by three community rehabilitation programs through the State Youth Works Wonders Program. Staff has recommended approval of all products before you and you have any questions regarding those products. Thank you. Commissioner Alvarez? No questions. Is there a motion? Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve the new products and price revisions presented by community community rehabilitation programs as recommended by staff. I second the motion. We're unanimous. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 11, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding approval of services offered by certified community rehabilitation programs under the Purchasing from People with Disabilities State Use Program. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Hughes, Commissioner Alvarez, Mr. Serna. For the record, my name is Howard Joseph, Program Manager, Purchasing from People with Disabilities Program. I have before you agenda item 11 for the approval of services. In regards to services, there are three contracts completed under temporary authority employing seven individuals being paid above minimum wage. There are 51 new and renewal contracts employing 307 individuals being paid at or above minimum wage. There was one transferred contract employing 32 individuals, all are, are paid above minimum wage. Staff recommends approval of all service contracts. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Commissioner Alvarez? No questions. Is there a motion? Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve service contracts offered by CRPs under the Purchasing from People with Disabilities program recommended by staff. I second the motion. We're unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item 12, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding recommended changes to the Vocational Rehabilitation Services Manual C-400 training services. Good morning, Chair Hughes, Commissioner Alvarez, and Mr. Sarna. For the record, I'm Carlene Geiger for Vocational Rehabilitation. Post-secondary education and training to include academic, vocational, and technical training leading to a bachelor's or higher degree, associate's degree, cert certificate, or occupation-specific credential is available to eligible VR customers if needed to achieve their mm -hmm. employment goal. Currently, these services are purchased from community and technical colleges, universities, and proprietary schools. Payment is based on the type of degree or certificate the customer is purchasing, pursuing. VR proposes the following policy revisions to address identified issues. Current rates for tuition and fees have not been updated in several years and do not align with post-secondary education costs reported by institutions of higher education and published by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, THECB. It is proposed that the maximum rate be based on the type of institution the customer will attend and align with the categorization of the institutions of higher education by the THECB, which would be public two-year community colleges, public technical state college, public four-year university, and health-related institutions. In addition, the maximum payment will be the average cost for that institution of higher education as published on the College for All Texans website, plus one standard deviation above the average. This maximum rate will encompass the average cost for 84% of the institutions of higher education in Texas and allow the rates to cover a variety of post-secondary programs and degrees that a VR customer may need. The maximum payment for training at a proprietary or career school would be aligned with same or similar training offered by public community colleges as published on the College for All Texans website. The proposed new rates would be inclusive of both tuition and fees and are detailed in the discussion paper and chapter in your notebooks. Policy would also be revised to provide maximum payments for books and supplies based on the type of institution the customer will attend. 
revisions will align progress requirements for VR customers enrolled in correspondence and distance learning courses with the requirements at comparable institutions of higher education. Revisions will align tuition and fee rates for training provided by paid instructors with the maximum tuition and fee rate for training at a proprietary institution. Policy revisions will align with 40 Texas Administrative Code Section 856.45 regarding payment for academic training at a private college or university in Texas or at a college or university outside of Texas with the maximum rate for tuition and fees for a comparable public in-state institution of higher education. Finally, it is proposed that these maximum payments be reviewed annually and updated as necessary based on the methodology described and following publication by the THECB of the average costs for tuition and fees for each of the institutions of higher education. These maximum payments, if approved, would be effective on or before on or after July 1st this year for customers starting post-secondary education or training and the new maximum payments would be applied for subsequent semesters or terms for customers that are currently enrolled, enrolled in post-secondary education and training prior to July 1st. Do you have any questions? Commissioner Alvarez? No, it's a great initiative. Thank you for this and I'm glad to hear there's an annual review. I want to make sure we stay competitive. Um, with our programs. So uh, is there a motion on this matter? Yes, ma'am. I move that we revise the Vocational Rehabilitation Service Manual C-400 regarding post-secondary education and training services as recommended by staff. A second. We're unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding statewide initiatives funded with WIOA, TANF, AEL, child care, or other state-level funds and WIOA alternative funding. Good morning. For the record, Jen Troke, Workforce Division. The Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, Section 128, provides that statewide funds may be used for discretionary employment and training activities. Historically, statewide funds have been made available through an application or competitive process requiring boards to apply. TWC is interested in reducing the administrative burden for boards so they may focus their efforts on managing service delivery. The Texas Administrative Code, Section 800.63i, states that the Commission may allocate such proportion of available WIOA alternative funding for statewide activities as it determines appropriate. Utilizing a distribution methodology that is based on the proportionality of all amounts of WIOA formula funds allocated during the same program year as well as an equal base amount. Boards have an ongoing need to be responsive to employer partners and community colleges in developing specific training projects, so staff are recommending a distribution to the boards that would allow them to implement one or more initiatives from a menu, including high demand job training initiative, Texas industry partnership, externship for teachers, women's entrepreneurship boot camp, additional individual training account funds, or other innovative projects for targeted populations. Boards would be required to submit a plan for the fund usage to TWC that has been approved by their local workforce development board. TWU staff will provide confirmation that any board approved plan is an allowable use of WIOA statewide funds. Staff will also provide regular updates to commissioners on each board's plans, progress, and use of the funds. Staff recommends that commissioners consider using available FY 2019 WIOA statewide reserve funds to provide $11,785,422 in WIOA alternative funding for statewide activities consistent with commission rules. Any questions? Commissioner Alvarez? Yes, I have a comment, and then I'd like to make the motion after that. But here are my comments. Regarding line 43 on page 1 through line 8 on page 2, page 1 states boards can implement one or more initiatives from the menu, yet the asterisk footnote indicates that four of the listed menu options are required. Shouldn't the boards have the flexibility to implement some or all of the listed options? Otherwise, why list the individual training accounts, funds, and other initiative projects as a menu option if there are no opportunities to implement with the monies allotted? Also, shouldn't registered apprenticeship be one of the listed menu options since it helps to serve underrepresented populations, individuals with barriers to employment, and helps employers train and retain skilled workforce? I believe it should be one of the listed menu options. These are just a recommendation and a comment. Do you have a response? 
Sure. Um, so for apprenticeship, if they would like to do other innovative projects for targeted populations, they could surely fit that within that uh, category. Mm -hmm. um, as far as requiring one of the four main initiatives, high demand, TIP, externship for teachers, or women's entrepreneurship boot camp, so they could choose one of those plus any combination of the others. So that okay. was what the asterisk was trying to reflect. Um, but maybe that didn't come across that clearly. Perfect. So, for example, building and construction, some of our other state initiatives, the asterisk would allow them to then fund those other items. Yes. Thank so, you for the hard work you put into this, Jen. Oh, it was a team. whole team of people. I thank know, you. and thank you for that. This is really good. Before I asked for a motion, I had another comment, mm -hmm. but I don't want to, do you have any further No, comments? that's the only comment. Um, and, and it's well noted that apprenticeship, if it, the stream of funding to the extent that can be used for that uh, certainly would be an option for boards. Uh, we know in Texas one size does not fit all, and we have had so many uh, great initiatives through uh, the leadership of uh, both staff bringing us information and then commissioners really hearing from stakeholders and coming up with great ideas um, that have we've seen the, the impact that it's had across the state, but certainly um, having to apply for these different RFPs um, and then sometimes not getting them. We've been often faced with boards that have been so disappointed not to be able to take advantage of some of these because it was so competitive. So I know that this is going to be something that's going to be very well received. And I know Commissioner Alvarez and I um, are going to be excited to get the updates exactly. and find out from the boards across the state what plans they do submit to us um, and then see whether any of them are, are things that we do want to scale. So I'm really excited to give them this opportunity and give them this flexibility. And I've heard really good feedback. So um, with that, is there a motion? Yes. So thank you for the comments, Madam Chair. I move that we approve using available FY 2019 WIOA statewide reserve funds to provide $11,785,422 in WIOA alternative funding for statewide activities consistent with commission rules and distributed to each local workforce area in the manner outlined in the attachment. And Thank you again. And I second the motion. We're unanimous. Thank you. Okay, there is nothing for item 14. Item 15, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding approval of local workforce development board nominees. Good morning, Chair Hughes, Commissioner Alvarez, and Mr. Cerna. For the record, Richard Wessner, Workforce Development Division. Before you, for your consideration and approval, are Workforce Development Board nominations for Workforce Solutions Concho Valley and North Central Texas. Commissioner Alvarez, is there a motion? Yes. I move that we approve the board nominees for Concho Valley and North Central Texas. Great I job. second the motion. We're unanimous. And thank you, Richard, for, yes. for serving and for the work you've been doing. Appreciate it. And congratulations to Ms. Williams as the new director of Workforce and Board Support. Mm -hmm. All right, item 16, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding legislative proposals by the Texas Workforce Commission to the 86th Legislative Regular Session. Good morning, Chair Hughes, Commissioner Alvarez, Tom McCarty with External Relations. You may recognize a familiar face to my right, which is Michael Britt. Uh, he's had sleep since last week, so he may look a little different. Um, the 86th Texas Legislature during signing die last Monday, May the 27th. Uh, during the session, TWC monitored 958 bills and staff across the agency prepared over 1,200 impact cost analysis. Uh, this work was invaluable in assisting the government relations and finance department this, this session. As you can see, this is an agency effort and not just the effort from GR and finance, but it's the effort from um, all departments within the agency and divisions. So I'd like to thank them for all their work in helping us uh, have a successful session. Uh, also in the audience is the GR team, and if they would stand, I'd like to recognize their long hours during the session. Uh, we have Kim Berry, Joe Dyer, Christopher Grinning, and Aaron Hamm. <laughs> They're not done yet, though. Uh, they've got a, they've got a, we're going to, I've challenged them to have a report done that we normally have to y'all in July to actually have it to you. Uh, the Monday after the veto period. Uh, so they may have another weekend under their belt. We'll see how that plays out. Um, I'd also like to thank those that are called upon to serve as a resource witness on the behalf of the agency uh, pretty much on a regular basis and sometimes on very short notice. Uh, Mr. Cerna, Courtney Arbor, Carrie Ballas, 
Lowell Kegg, Aaron Demerson, Cheryl Fuller, Clay Cole, Chuck Ross, Lee Purcell, and Mariana Vega, who I understand is on a beach somewhere in Mexico right now. So um, anyways, uh, some of them are in the audience, but I'd like to also thank them and, and just, you know. If, if your name was called, will you please to. stand? Okay. So this morning, I'll provide you with an overview of TWC's appropriations, and uh, Michael's going to highlight uh, major bills that TWC was monitoring, as well as our legislative our, our legislative bills as well. Uh, with respect to the appropriations bill for the 20, uh, 2020 and 2021 biennium, HB1 appropriates TWC with uh, approximately $1 billion in all funds. The legislature also funded all of TWC's exceptional items requests for the restoration of $35.1 million in child care funding, that had been originally removed from the uh, fiscal, fiscal year 2021 appropriations. Uh, TWC's request for an additional six million for the uh, Jobs and Education for Texans program and an additional 1.3 million in apprenticeship funding. Uh, the legislature also approved TWC's capital budget request for the eligible training provider and career school systems. TWC's request for an unemployment insurance system replacement and the workforce case management system. HP1 also includes several new riders for TWC. The bill includes a new rider that requires TWC to submit a biennial report on AEL program activities and performance measures, a new rider that requires TWC to contract with an external consultant to conduct a review of the AEL program and requires all AEL grants awards to be approved by the commission. Uh, the bill also includes a rider that allocates $250,000 each year of the biennium to form a collaborative partnership with organizations that, among other specific requirements, are exempt from federal income taxes, composed of individuals who ex have expertise in workforce training, are located in and serve urban areas of the state, and are accredited, accredited by the National Center for Construction Education and Research, and have proven experience in administering training programs through contracting with state agencies. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael and let him uh, go over the legislation. Good morning, Chair Hughes, Commissioner Alvarez. Again, for the record, Michael Britt, Governmental Relations. Uh, the legislature did pass three of TWC's legislative proposals. Senate Bill 1500 by Senator Zaffarini and sponsored by Representative Vo, which was TWC's legislative proposal related to the removal of the unconstitutional provisions of the Texas Payday Law. The bill was signed by the governor on May 22nd and became effective on that day. Uh, Senate Bill 1413 by Senator Zaffarini and also sponsored by Representative Vo, which is TWC's legislative proposal regarding the consolidation of annual reporting requirements, was signed into law on May 28th, and the bill is effective on September the 1st. Finally, Senate Bill 2296 by Senator Powell and sponsored by Representative Vo is TWC's legislative proposal related to Common Paymaster. That bill is awaiting the governor's action. Uh, now I'll highlight a few of the major bills related to TWC that were passed this session. House Bill 680 by Representative Deschatel. This legislation makes numerous changes um, to the child care program, including changes to professional development for child care providers, requires TWC to consider the cost and placements available when evaluating whether the state CCDF funds address the child care needs of each board area, requires TWC to add to its report on the effectiveness of child care information on, the co on coordination with TEA to assign PEAMS numbers to children younger than six, coordination with TEA on quality improvement activities, efforts to increase coordination among subsidized child care providers, and requires TWC to receive input from TEA, open enrollment charter schools, among others, as part of its stakeholder input on the program. And finally, the bill allows for boards to establish contracted slots for subsidized child care. House Bill 696 by Representative Blanco codifies the Texas Veterans Leadership Program and Operation Welcome Home Services for Veterans and Military Service Members. House Bill 700 by Representative Guillen. Uh, this bill adds local workforce development boards to the list of entities eligible to receive skills development fund grants. The bill also requires TWC to complete a study on ways to increase the effectiveness of the Skills Development Fund that, that makes recommendations on ways to increase the effectiveness and expand participation in the program. Next, we had House Bill 1483 by Representative Frank. This bill creates a pilot program to be administered by HHSC with assistance from TWC. 
to assist eligible families to gain permanent self-sufficiency from means-tested public benefits, including TANF and SNAP. House Bill 1949 by Representative Guillen requires TWC to establish a performance-based process for annual awarding of AEL funds to grant recipients. This bill also requires that the commission approve the award of all AEL grant funding. <clears throat> we had House Bill 2784 by Representative Phelan. This legislation creates the Texas Industry Recognized Apprenticeship Grant Program uh, to address the industrial workforce needs of the state resulting from Hurricane Harvey. The bill also creates the Texas Industry Recognized Apprenticeship Fund as a dedicated account in the state's general revenue fund from which these apprenticeship programs will be funded. Next, we had House Bill 3511 by Representative Van Deaver. This bill creates the Commission on Texas Workforce of the Future, of which TWC is a member. Senate Bill 619 by Senator Birdwell. This bill sets the Sunset Commission review date for the Purchasing from People with Disabilities program to the year 2027, which aligns it with TWC's upcoming sunset date. Finally, we had Senate Bill 1055 by Senator Zaffarini. This bill creates a workforce diploma pilot project to be administered by TWC. Governor Abbott has until June 16th to sign or veto legislation passed during the 86th legislature. So it be at that time, we'll know which of these bills do in fact become enacted or potentially vetoed. And just in closing, I would like to echo Tom's comments on my, you know, and extend my thanks to stat, not only agency staff, but also uh, the GR team, which I am privileged to lead every day, and I can't thank them enough for all their help. So with that, that concludes my remarks. I'm happy to answer any questions. Commissioner Alvarez. Great job, Mike, Tom, and your team. Thank you for keeping us posted on the daily activity of what was going on during session. Thank, thank, you, thank you for all your work. I too want to thank you, and I think everyone in this room should give themselves a big round of applause and give you one for surviving this session and all the great work that was done. Um, I think it's important to note for them to entrust us with our exceptional items and the additional funding for these programs really speaks to knowing that we're very good stewards of the funds and that we make such an impact across the state, and that's really due to all the hard work of everyone in this room and across the state with our board. So thank you very much for all of that great work, and I hope you continue to get some, some rest. So with that, we will move to item 17, discussion, consideration, and possible action regarding, um, one second, uh, regarding enacted, proposed, or considered federal regulations, executive orders, or federal or state enacted or proposed legislation. No, we'll move was... along from that one. And sorry, I didn't have a note that there wasn't anything there. Kind of covered it often in 16. Um, okay, so 18, report and update by the executive director and staff regarding administrative matters, including internal policies and procedures, customer and board service issues, status of current or potential project assignments, organizational matters, and responsibilities of the agency's divisions. Um, good morning. Uh, very, very quickly, one of the things that Tom... Could please state your name for the oh, record. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ed but Saranac. you look very familiar. <laughs> uh, Tom suggested that I stand when uh, Courtney and the other staff stood, and I thought, well, I can I can sit well and maybe roll over, but I'm not sure I can stand. So. Um, one thing that Tom pointed out, or, or, or Michael, is uh, Senate Bill 1413, which I would like to point out uh, was a very significant piece of legislation for this agency, and only we were only successful at getting it passed because of Tom McCarty's hard work, uh, he, uh, and I say that uh, he did work hard on it, but uh, partially tongue-in-cheek because he was our resource witness, and I don't believe I've ever seen somebody prepare to be a resource witness on a bill to just consolidate reports as much as I saw Tom prepare. Uh, so that's what happens when you get a GR person to actually have them sit at a table to testify. They, they realize everything else that we have to go through, but he, he and all the GR staff and all the agency staff did fantastic during the session. Um, he did point out that the, that was the first bill, I believe, that the governor did sign. So it was, uh, was that uh, report's consolidation. A uh, couple of things I want to report to the, uh, to the commission. First of all, uh, in IT, uh, we did have an employee receive uh, an outstanding IT service and support award uh, at the Texas Digital Summit. Um, one of our IT security staff, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pronounce her name right, and I apologize to Sophia in advance, uh, but uh, Sophia Glamuzuna, Gl Glamuzuna 
um, who works in, in IT security received this award. Uh, the award honors uh, those dedicated to public service recognizing uh, the IT uh, team members who work day in and day out uh, providing services to the citizens of Texas and their customers. Uh, Sophia has done an outstanding job in that area. She's championed our uh, internal anti-phishing efforts uh, and has been very instrumental in uh, getting the word out and a lot of training out in that area. So we wanted to compliment uh, Sophia uh, on her receiving that award. Is she here? I think she's here. Yeah, Congratulations. I'm surprised uh, IT let her out of that secure room that they keep her in. <laughs> Uh, but she's done an outstanding job for us. Um, the second thing I wanted to, to do was going on up, upstairs uh, right now, and it's been several weeks, are these different sessions for train the trainer for work in Texas replacement. Um, there have been at least four sessions. I think uh, this is the uh, fifth one. We've had uh, four for uh, board trainers that are coming in to get trained. Uh, and we've had one out at our MOPAC facility for our own staff. I, I believe those sessions are going very well. And the significance of the session is, one, um, the individuals that are there, and, and I went up to visit with them earlier today, the individuals that are, are, that are there from the boards take that material, but then uh, in their own way customize it so that it meets the needs of their customers in the board much better than having somebody from TWC or our vendor partner, uh, GeoSolutions, go out and provide generic training to all of our board partners. They can, they can customize it to the unique uh, employees in the boards that'll, that'll help them get up to speed quicker. Those sessions are going very well. Uh, staff also continues to work with GSI to get the system um, tested and completed and implemented uh, as we move forward. And those efforts are going, going on as well. So I wanted to make sure that, one, that you knew about the training that was going on very successfully, and two, the continued efforts of the staff to get that system uh, implemented. Uh, so we can have our new work in Texas system in place. Uh, and then the other thing I have is a little bit of uh, not so happy news. Uh, Alfredo Mikey will be uh, leaving the agency uh, effective this Friday. Uh, it's been a long farewell. Uh, he, he told me several weeks ago that he was going to be out and then uh, he was going to be leaving and then he promptly was out for a couple of weeks. Uh, he is, uh, he's kind of leaving the TWC nest and going and starting his own business. Uh, to help uh, other states agencies uh, as well as possibly other agencies here with their RPI efforts uh, hanging out his own shingle. Uh, he joined us about six and a half years ago mm -hmm. and has done an outstanding job leading our efforts and really getting us uh, really getting us motivated. I don't know if Alfredo is here or not uh, or if he's upstairs. He's not. He's upstairs um, trying to get a whole bunch of things done in one week uh, plus, uh, plus get his office packed up. If you've been in there and seen his office, um, it's, um, it's a little bit of a, of a, uh, a shambles right now. But at <laughs> any rate, I wanted to appreciate, I wanted to express my appreciation to Alfredo mm -hmm. for leading, uh, our RPI efforts, which have made a significant uh, impact on the agency and helped, uh, us get recognition, um, statewide for the, for those efforts. Uh, those are the only things that I have to report. Commissioner Alvarez, I have some things to add, but I didn't know Go if you ahead. had anything. No, ma'am. Okay. Well, with respect to Alfredo, I had the opportunity to ride in the elevator with him this morning, so I can attest that he's here and, I guess, packing, and I'm excited to hear that he is moving on to this exciting new adventure, which I believe also includes international clients, but he did make a point of saying he'll be a future stakeholder as an employer in the state of Texas, and um, we've seen the benefits of RPI across the agency, so I'm really thankful to him for his service in that area and grateful that um, we're going to continue um, the work that he began here and um, with Jonathan and, and the team. So looking forward to continuing to have that type of process where we take that time to figure out how we can really uh, find the most efficiencies in the work that we do. So really appreciate their efforts. I did want to ask Ed, and this is a conversation for later. I'm just putting it on the record. I'm my opportunity to talk to Commissioner Alvarez about it, or at least mention it to him. In the past, we had a statewide initiative uh, specific to health care, and I think that we could potentially dust that off. It would probably be a, a different version of it, because I don't know that it was as successful as it could have been. I also think it was specific to nurses, but we continue to hear across the state uh, for the ongoing need in the healthcare profession, and some examples of some 
um, you know, health, allied healthcare industry and occupations type initiative that we could have could address um, home health aides, dental lab techs, pharmacy techs, phlebotomists, dental hygienists, cardio techs, radiation techs, respiratory techs, physical therapists, medical assistants, physician assistants. I think we could have a broader range of high demand jobs and figuring out how we can put a little bit of an extra investment as a state to make sure that our healthcare industries are um, really getting the extra support that they need to continue to grow. So um, I'd request the staff to look at that as a potential initiative and then bring it back to us uh, for briefing and for discussion at a future date. And my staff would be happy to, to work with you on it. And Commissioner Alvarez, if y'all want to also weigh in in the process, I'd be happy to have that briefing as an ongoing um, opportunity to maybe consider that in the future docket. Yes, ma'am. We'll do that. Thank you for that. Love it. Um, all right. So with that, we are actually now going to go into executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code, Section 551.071. One, concerning pending and or contemplated litigation, captured NTT data versus TWC, and to discuss the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or dismissal of the executive director, internal auditor, executive staff, or other personnel pursuant to Texas Government Code, Section 551.074A1.
All right, we are back on the record. We had gone um, off to executive session as previously noted at 9.37 a.m. Not in there. No one's in there. Okay, sure. We're going to pause a moment to wait for the feed. All right, we are back on the record. We had gone to executive session at 9.37 a.m. The time is now 10.37 a.m. And um, I believe there's a motion to consider. Yes, ma'am. I move that we approve the settlement of dispute captioned as NTT Data Inc. versus Texas Workforce Commission State Office of Administrative Hearing Docket Number 321-18-0439-CC. And I second the motion. We are unanimous. Have a good day, everyone. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. I second. We are adjourned. Oh, yeah.